welcome back to another episode of the Deductionist podcast, ladies and gentlemen. You may or may not be aware uh, that they, they can't actually see you yet, dude, to be fair. <laughs> Um, so in, in terms of our, our you, I didn't, mate, I don't even know if they can hear you. I can hear you, but like, I don't even know. I don't know if they can. <laughs> so we are, we are trying something today. We are trying something. Adam is tuning in from a remote location. Um, so let's, let's bring him up now. Ladies and gentlemen from area 51, they've let him out from under the stairs. It's, it's Adam. You're on the screen, sir. Yes. The crowd goes wild. So what I'm also going to do is I, I'm going to record this as well, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... So here's the thing. I was trying to stream our Zoom conversation into the program that we use to stream it out everywhere else. I got the camera feed set up so it wasn't just the the infinite camera on the loop, uh, but it seems as though one of the sound sources went awry, so we dropped that pretty fast. <laughs> and here it is, the proper podcast. I'm going to record this as well, just in case. Cool, 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 cool. cool. <laughs> we have just evidence that we were here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise. Like, I don't know what is going to go right, what is going to go wrong. For for all I know, <laughs> you you could be on everyone's screen at home, and they could just see you. They they could not they could not be able to hear you right now. I have no idea. I thought you were going to say they could just see me, not you. It's just me talking yeah, it's just, random. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just you. It's just you. what's going, going on here. This is this is great. Did you borrow this off Prince? What is this? <laughs> I appear to have thrown up Technicolor all over myself, <laughs> but it's a, it's a it's a, it's a, a snuggy uh, Becky got me basically to uh, battle the 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 heating costs of winter. Even though we've got the fire on and the heating on, so fuck it. <laughs> I'm just double layered, I'm triple layered, triple layered. <laughs> you are in a thruple of warmth. Laid. Bless you, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. So the ice baths didn't wet your whistle. That's what I'm hearing. I think I spent two. I'm still traumatized from it that I'm now just consistently wrapped up, <laughs> still trying to get the feeling back in my fingers. <laughs> oh, mate! When I, when I got in it um, the other morning, because I've got I've got an actual one now. When I got in oh, it the it other come? morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, uh, nice. it's 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 a Lumi uh, ice pod. I think it's called, but it's, nice. it's for cold therapy. But what was great is when I took the lid off. I had to crack the ice on the top. It was that cold through the night that the surface of the water had frozen. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> and I, I remember distinctly cha channeling like your version of uh, they can't hear you. Uh, they can't hear you. Um, oh. Well, I, well it, it, the first comment of the boss says they, they can't hear you. I, I don't know how that works. I'll be honest with you. Um, so like you, you can see him. Here. You can see him. Um, uh, we'll post the we'll post the proper version. Uh, they, they, yeah, they, they, it's, this is more than a few people now. They can only hear me. Um, so yeah. we'll, we'll we'll post the proper version tomorrow, and um, they, they, you can join in here if you want. <laughs> I'll I'll go back and forth. But it, it, in essence, Adam is tuning in from a random location. And as such, yeah. doesn't have access to a computer. He only has access to his phone. The software that we use for streaming services doesn't work through a phone. So I'm streaming a Zoom call in here. And we're streaming inside your minds. Yeah. I'm saying all this. They for can't the benefit of no one apart from you. <laughs> I, I wonder I wonder if I do that. I wonder if like they they can hear you now or none of us now. Can you hear me now? Or, can or, you hear me now? Or nothing. I like I've just can changed the sound source to something that popped up and said oh. Zoom. I uh, like Zoom. Maybe <laughs> may, may, maybe <laughs> that will work. Sound. Maybe, maybe. Will they hear this tomorrow when you've recorded it? And will I be in the recording? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're recording the Zoom conversation as well, ah, so everything, yeah, yeah, everything's yeah. there. Everything's so, there. That's, it's a better reason to watch now than watch tomorrow to find out exactly what you're responding to. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, Bryce has stated that it's it's good lip reading practice, and of course it is, right? Yes, it is. Um, but 
it is challenging Nothing lip reading lost. practice by virtue of the fact that we both have beards. So most of our lip Ooh. movement is is hidden by the fact that we are wearing face well, mullets. My, mullets. Mine more so because uh, I'm about to disappear into the snuddy. Yes, absolutely. I mean, let's face it, right? What I could do, really... <laughs> <laughs> what I could do is just stop at streaming here and then stream in the Zoom conversation. Do it old school. Ooh. Do it old school. Do I do, do it, it old school? school? Old school? Thing. Yeah, I'll do it old school. Two do minutes, guys. School. We'll be back. Two minutes. We shall return. Post -haste. We we're still here. Um, oh, we're still <laughs> me, and, me, me and you are still here. Uh, fed through differently somewhere to them then. Yeah, they'll they'll be seeing the the thing end, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's try this. That's the price of one. Uh, live on YouTube. Let's try that. Pen card, like Gmail. That one. It's buffering, <laughs> sir. It's trying oh. to do something. Okay. Yeah. I'll take something. Yes. Yes. Uh. Very nice. Quite. Mm. For all I know, this could be going out live. Um, wow, that's <laughs> that's that's new. Um, yes, that's that's. Hmm. Fantastic. Try that once more live on YouTube. And card like Gmail. Let's try that one. Zero Gmail. The. Uh, because there's so much, like there's seven, uh, there's seven options for me to choose from. And I, I don't, I, I don't have seven channels. Like I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now. I accept the cookies. What do you want from me? How to spot manipulation? Tech ticks. Public go live. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Oh, it says live. It's oh, being live. It. It's being live streamed. We're we're live streaming. Something's happening. Yes. Are we, are we back? There is a game afoot. Oh my! The wheel has spun again. <laughs> Yay! Oh. We figured, we figured out how to do it old school. That's fabulous. Something's been done. Something occurred. <laughs> Congratulations to all that witnessed it. Yay! Yay! All the way back there. Bryce can hear everyone now. We're all good. Oh, fantastic. Um, we got it back. <laughs> it, it was ambitious. I, I tried it on the fly. And if you are a long-time viewer of the podcast, you will well know that when technical concerns arise, <laughs> um, they never normally go very well. <laughs> We're always by the seat of our pants, but that's the best way to fly. Right. You know, that's Ooh. that's... Shit invariably happens. <laughs> it's the formula. So how the devil are you, good sir? I'm bloody good, thank you. I'm bloody good. How the devil are you this merriest of months? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Are you feeling particularly festive? It is the 1st of December, after all. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling warm. <laughs> But that I think that's, that's, that, that's not necessarily spiritual to the month. I think that it's just more so the uh, the temperature that that these conditions of being in a in a duvet and a snuddy and a, having a hot brew have caused. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a hot brew. He's drinking the tears of his victims. Come on. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, they're only going on the plants otherwise. <laughs> Well, that's fair. That's fair. How, else are, they, the how else are they supposed to grow? Right? How else are they supposed exactly. to work? Exactly. <laughs> it's a waste of time sending them in the post to the relatives because they just dry up in the letters. There you go. Right. And I'd never be giving money that way. <laughs> <laughs> what are we even about, talking about? Um, um, right. How about, how about you? Feeling particularly festive? Are you? Not at all. In, in, in the spirit. <laughs> Fuck you, Santa. Uh, Fuck you. Like, um, I, 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 I actually bit the bullet and watched Elf for the first time the other day. All right. Yeah. Will Ferrell's Elf. Yeah, and Did I hated it? it. You hated it. 
<laughs> Don't yeah, watch any yeah. Asda adverts, Em. No, I've, se- I've seen the Asda, Asda adverts. I, I appreciate them for the technical kind of know-how of, uh, of of moving parts of a film into a workable context from yeah. people from Northern England. <laughs> T- tell you what I did watch. Enola Holmes 2. Oh, no. Why? Why? Why would you do such a thing to yourself? What? <laughs> did you just wake up one morning and thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to practice some self-torture. Well, to be, fair, on Netflix. to be fair, um, uh, it, was about, it was about four days ago, I started with the pain in my kidneys again. I got, I got another bout of kidney stones. Oh, shit. Uh, and so I'd, I'd had that for three days, which is the longest that I'd ever had it. Christ. And sort of day two, uh, I was thinking, e- easy watching, turn your brain off, didn't really care about it. So I watched the American Pies. Yeah. Uh, well, I watched the ones that were on Netflix, which is two, three, the reunion, and... Um, is it camp? No, no, no the Naked Mile. The Naked, Naked Mile. Mile. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and Enola Holmes 2 popped up after the Naked Mile. God knows why. Because that's normal. <laughs> that, that's normally stuff connected. that's kind of connected to it. But I mean, but either way, it did. And um, right. so I was like, ah, "Go on, did it." Yeah. What? What did you uh, And it, to sum up my reactions, right? So from beginning to middle to end, it was kind of like, "Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> interesting." <laughs> Well, uh, I wouldn't have done that myself, but fair enough. You know, I can see. No, 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 no. Oh dear! Oh no! That's that was pretty much what it did. Like the the puzzle, the, the, the mystery, the, the the kind of uh, uh, chaos of the film of of the Sherlock character and the Enola uh, character working on separate cases that eventually coalesced. Really, I, I, I really, hand on heart. Yeah. I don't know what the proper way to do that is. This is my left side. Hand on heart. <laughs> uh, hand, on heart. Yeah. hand on heart. Really enjoyed that bit. Really oh. enjoyed that bit. But, uh, like, I'm not going to give any spoilers away in case, in case anybody wants to yeah. uh, watch it themselves. But when it came to the reveal of the big bad at the end, I was like, Oh, no. What the fuck? Just, just, just a big old no. That's such a cop out, pandering piece of shit. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, better than the first one, though, in some no. aspect. No, oh, no. <laughs> no, because the first one had a good mystery, a good puzzle. The first one had a good puzzle, yeah. and like this one, um, I, I haven't checked the facts on it, but it, it felt like it was longer. Right. Hmm. It, <laughs> that might have been down to my enjoyment, and you know, damn you, Einstein. Um, that, <laughs> Uh, and that kind of theory of relativity stuff, but whatever it was, it felt longer, right? So okay. it felt like they kind of put more time into the puzzle, which, yeah. as a puzzle obsessed, beardy weirdo, <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, all down for I'm, it. I'm into Probably. all of that stuff. I'm into all yeah. of that stuff. But if you're going to put that much time into the reveal of a big bad, yeah, it was just yeah. like. It, there's got to be a payoff, haven't there? You've got to. Show. The way, the way I, I, I kind of likened it. Have you ever watched any of these Guinness World Record holders that will take a hot water bottle and go. <laughs> and they're putting loads of effort in, it's getting really yeah. big, and everyone's getting kind of like, oh, oh God, it's going to be a massive bang. Oh, God. <laughs> and then the ending would just be like. <laughs> yeah, real anti climax. That's what it was. Oh man! So it's literally, as a metaphor, it's a hot water hot water bottle getting blown up. Yeah, it's a, a hot water bottle getting blown up deflated. to a drum roll and then failing at life and being shouted at by its dad. <laughs> that's that's what it is. Jesus! I mean, I, I like the review. I think more than the uh, the sound of the film. <laughs> <laughs> and. 
don't get me wrong, right? I'm glad they expanded upon the the, the Sherlock character himself. I'm all for a Sherlock yeah. that lifts. I think that's William. the only thing that that was my biggest gripe with the first one was was Cavill's time as Sherlock. So I was hoping with this one at least flesh him out, give him give him something to bite, you know. I wouldn't. I, I'm, and again, this is only my opinion, right? Who cares about my opinion, first of all, yeah. other than me? I would say they just gave him more airtime. They didn't uh, really flesh him out. They presented a couple of good ideas. Yeah. But that that really needed a series to to kind of e- expand on them. Like this is you, that you're wasting Cavill. Cavill's a massive nerd. He looks into the law. He's not just like your one trip pony flash in the pan actor who comes on board for the script and then reads the script and wants done with that. And the film is kind of like meh, next project. He's into it. Like The Witcher and uh, Superman, he's, he knows the background. He knows the characters. He knows what he's doing coming in. He loves these things before he came in and done his research. You rarely get an actor who is as sort of forthright with his nerdiness. As 100% agree. Why, why bring 100%. him on if you're not going to use that? Why not just bring bring in someone else who's relevant to the Netflix world to do it? I'm sure any other mm. actor would love to have been in that role, but I can't imagine another actor like Cavill at the moment who's sort of like that d- degree of, you know, kind of law yeah. of, a, of a, uh, agreed. A, and like, I, wa- I, watched a, I watched a couple of the, the kind of press interviews for Enola Holmes too, because um, mm. Ga- Gary sent me one. You know Gary? Um, yeah, good old. And man. yeah, um, somebody asked Henry Cavill, and uh, bear in mind, uh, if, if there are any Warhammer fans that watch this, I have never seen, played, done anything. I know that Warhammer is a thing. Other than that, yeah, no, no idea. So somebody asked him um, what Warhammer clan or group or whatever it was that Sherlock would be a part of. And he sat there really thinking, like, well, he did this, but Sherlock is this and this and this. Yeah. And, like, that that guy really thinks yeah. about his roles, really puts the effort in, and it was wasted. Wasted. Oh, well, I mean, I really hope from this, at least the kind of, like, maybe he obviously doesn't get the chance in the films, but maybe they could look at him as an actor and his presence in, in the Sherlock role. Take that do something with it. Make a Sherlock series. Because we haven't had anything forthright no. other than the BBC modern modernised Sherlock, which really, no. when was the last series of that? Was it like 2016, 17, something like that? Back in Norm, no. that was. I don't know. Back in, it, 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 that, even that is becoming a thing of the past now. It's no yeah. longer the modern Sherlock. We now have the platform for something new Sherlock-wise. Like, Agreed. But, you know, it's one of those like, things, it's a shame we, it's not being picked up. It is, it is, it is. And Henry Cavill, to be fair, right, was really mm. good. He got this kind of, like, gruff Geralt quality to his voice, you know, that yeah. kind of cold, silent exterior. You know, he was he yeah. was picking faults with other people's observations and, and, and no, schooling no. Enola how, on how to do things properly. I'm like, yes, yeah. I, I like this. This is great. And then, like, just at the end, wow, I actually knew that. Oh, oh dear. Get the writers lined up against the wall, turn around. <laughs> and castrate them all. <laughs> Even if they're women, <laughs> castrate them all. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's just a fucking shame, man. It's it is. Just, it's a I, real shame. It is. I know, like, a lot of people are wary of going into this like it's the Sherlock franchise again, like especially like producers and writers and under the, the, I suppose there's a shadow that Benedict Cumberbatch raised with his performance and Stephen Moffat with his writing. And, but at the same time, no one's seen a classic time appropriate like Sherlock. Period piece. Period piece. Yeah. Actually yeah. fitting the books. No one's gone back to that. They've always tried to modernize it. Yeah. And sometimes you can do something fresh with the original stuff. Go back, man. Go back for fuck's sake. Re-educate Agreed. people. Agreed. Re-educate people. Yeah. And if you're going to do it as well, and give the puzzle, the mystery, the time it needs. Give it Absolutely. the time that it needs. Yeah. If you're painting this big, 
overarching narrative that bleeds into all parts of London and affects all of these people. Two and a half hours, sure. That's a lot of leg room to do. But when you're dealing with character arcs and everything, there's, there's, there's not really a lot of time to cover the puzzle within that. If you want to track the mystery yeah. element, it needs the time. That's why yeah. I think The Alienist, if you've ever watched that on Netflix, it's... Um, I've heard of it. I've oh, seen... Gosh, what's his name? Uh, Daniel Daniel Bruhl, him, him that played um, um, uh, Baron Zemo. In uh, in Captain America, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, Civil yes, War, yes. yeah, um, really good. The 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 series, the expansive details, really kind of broken down over a period use. Oh, fantastic! That's, I mean, that's what it needs. That that sort of thing, obviously, like everything put together puzzle wise, like in a series, the, the bar is raised really like today. Uh, Glass Onion. Um, it's uh, the no, Marvel sequel that's coming out. Apparently, got rave reviews, and they're saying that the the puzzle to it, the actual mystery behind it, is presented in such a unique way as was the original. It was kind of a great thing, and you've got all this content that has raised the bar. Don't mm. come in underwhelming that mm. with w- under the banner of Sherlock, because you would think Sher- a Sherlock story will be above anything. In terms of mystery and puzzle, do not under, do not underperform on the puzzle for God's sake. That's part of it. Yeah, that's your USP. Well, yeah, that's your USP, right? If, if murder mysteries and Sherlock stories, and like uh, uh, you know, Quaro with uh, you know the death on the Nile and murder on the Orient Express. Mm. You give the time to the puzzle. The characters drive the puzzle. Yeah. Right. Whereas the the problem that I find with the Enola Holmes films, it was the other way around. Uh, that's that's what yeah. I that's that was the big kind of issue with that for me, it, and it had such such promise. Even like yeah. I I can't stand Millie Millie what's her face uh, as an actress I, and from from I, from Stranger I, Things and then all that. I I just I mean I'm I'm yeah. sure in real life she's a lovely person. Fair enough. Like I don't know her. <laughs> I got the acting to go, <laughs> and the performances and all that kind of stuff to go on. I don't I don't. It's yeah. just something about the kind of uh, quality there that just doesn't connect with me. But if you're going to put her in there, she was great as Anola. She was this kind of stiff, upper lipped, don't take no shit little woman living in the shadow of Big Sherlock. And she was really yeah. good. She was really good. Build out the puzzle, grab the intrigue, know your audience. That was the thing that was missing for me. For yeah. Me. No, I completely understand. It was the same with the first one, wasn't it? In a sense, it just the first one, she, you know, it felt like a vehicle for her because, for, from my perspective, it just felt like it was uh, a place for her to build her success from yeah. Stranger Things and, you know, kind of make her a Netflix household name because that's what it was yeah. essentially. She was going from one big Netflix project to another one and they needed a big name for it. Uh, and they just chose that, and it just sort of felt like, well, is this more about her and the character? Is it more about the character and the story, or is it about her? And the producers looked at this and said, yes, this this is what Millie Bobby Brown needs Agreed. in her career right now. Agreed. That's that's what annoyed me about the first Suicide Squad with Will Smith. There was there were yeah. so many in masturbatory scenes of Will Smith just doing his slow motion death yeah. stroke. And that's not death stroke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not death stroke. It became uh, a, a film with a whole different purpose, didn't it? And you can tell sometimes when the purpose of certain um like uh, film stories are taken away from, from what they're meant to be and used as sort of like you know uh, a platform for for an individual. Yeah. Rather yeah. than the story, it's a shame. Which, which yeah. is a is a great segue into the the co- the main content for what we are looking to talk about today, so which is. is which is manipulation tactics, right? It's manipulation stuff within that within that way. So, yeah. if I might put the bold opening question to you, sir, is <gasps> there a time is there a time in your life that you have ever considered 
uh, rubbing peanut butter on your jet. No, uh, 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 if you... I'm doing it now. Has <laughs> it there been a time in your life where you've ever been manipulated? And after the fact, oh, you know course. you've been manipulated. Yeah, hundred percent. How have I? Uh, how long have I known you now? Oh God, it's got to be at least a century and a half, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you've been manipulating me for a century and a half. Still. <laughs> <laughs> but that's your job. Good form, Peter. Good form. <laughs> you are my Darren Brown. <laughs> Every that time wasn't you... in the script, motherfucker. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Every time he says toast, I slap myself in the face. <laughs> time a certain chime plays on the clock, I'll take a drink down myself. <laughs> I do. I do remember that. Right? There was. It was. You might not remember it because of what happened, which is a great way to open a story. There was. There was. There was, there was, there was me. There was me. You and Ian at the Horn and Trumpet, which is a, a pub around the corner from me, and it was not long after. Yeah. Uh, not long after me, you and Ian. First, first started hanging out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it was, I think it may. I, I don't know who bought it up, but one of you bought up hypnosis. And like, <laughs> so I remember uh, talking to you uh, for a bit with your hand on the table, and then asking you to pick your hand up, and you couldn't. And it was, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> who? Why? <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, seriously aside, it, uh, has yeah. there ever been something that you felt yeah. afterwards that you've been manipulated into? What uh, is is there anything that you can tell oh, us definitely. about that? Without Most... naming names or anything yeah. along those lines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I suppose at the time you kind of it's more sort of how would you describe it? Because it's more work based than anything. You know, when you're kind of um, where we used to work. Yeah, yeah. You were made to do certain things and they told you it was for one reason and you kind of knew pretty much straight away oh for the love of god like it's because they such and such and you know if we were together or if we were the other like-minded people we would discuss the bullshittery during or even after <laughs> like of uh, you know, Gemma. i miss talking, talking to Gemma. Talking to <laughs> sincerely <laughs> sincerely yeah. she was yeah. she was she was a straight shooting chick and i love it a bit like oh, honest, god, we got out, out, some of the most direct conversations you could have would be with that woman. Spot yeah. on. I, I, I'm digressing. Anyway, carry on. No, it was exactly that sort of thing where she would just like, you know, or we'd be talking to other people and you'd say straight away, like, that's a load of fucking shit. That mm -hmm. is whatever we're doing now isn't because of such and such or for mm -hmm. this reason or that reason. It's because they want to, mm -hmm. I don't know, they want to, they want to fuck off like and, do whatever they need to do or they want uh this or that and we're being basically made to pick up the flack in the name of yeah. doing our job in <laughs> the know? name of some, yeah. some other yeah. bullshit reason yeah, yeah. it was usually da wants it because it couldn't be usually couldn't, all the time the after movie <laughs> fucking <laughs> off, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> stupid cunt <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so when you when you look back at that, what yeah. was for you specifically? Because I've I've got my own I've got my own kind of uh, feelings in, in response yeah. to that. What was it that you think made you do this? Like, was it their status? Was it their position? Was it their hierarchy? Oh, yeah. Did you just feel connected to them yeah. and want to do your work for them or whatever it was? What was it? Certainly, do what it was. Certainly, status and position. If they were full on abusing that power because, in some aspects, you were like, "Well, yeah, of course, this is like if you know you couldn't you couldn't, couldn't prove certain points. It would be pointless to argue, yeah, the ins and outs of why you've been asked to do something because, in a way, it was stupid. You both knew one was lying <laughs> out of his ass for something, and you were just like, "It's not even worth." the argument because it's just going to go around in circles end up with a number of phone calls and i'm probably gonna to have to do it anyway <laughs> it's true 
So it kind of wasn't worth it. So yeah, status and position, certainly two big factors that he that that Lummox would pivot on. <laughs> well, 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 that's the thing, you know, we, we you could make the argument that the, if you boil it down to its roots, that would be uh, akin to the Milgram experiment in terms of how authority, uh, regardless yeah. of whether it's it should be there or not, yeah. right? but uh, how is, is authority... The, the, the students in the prison and the is that the prison officers and the no 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 so the, the milgram experiment was uh, uh the the electronic vaults and the guy in the white jacket with the clipboard asking oh, somebody right. to, course, to yeah. shock someone else and then they can just hear oh, oh god yeah. i'm dying and then they'd add more vaults yes. and whatnot and like they tell the person well this vaults will kill someone press a switch <laughs> I, why, who? And then, <laughs> th- then they press them and they, oh, God. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Gone. Nothing. Uh, and then the person would go, mm-hmm, yeah, next one. Yeah, press the switch. <laughs> just, yeah. to, just, to, just to see how far they would go. And so in terms of there, yeah. is, there is an element to authority. It's certainly the position that somebody mm-hmm. holds. That, that influences the behavior of those that perceive that position to be higher than them in, in, in that Absolutely. moment, right? And the, the reason I'm, I'm kind of talking around these topics is because there is, there is one um, colossal wombat of a cunt um, that, <laughs> that I, 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 I can't fathom. I, I can't fathom how he's been able to do what he's done were it not Can't for be. were were ah <laughs> uh, no there's a steam there's a, there's a steamroller somewhere with that guy's name on it um uh, no no I'm talking about Matt Hancock in oh. the jungles of Australia for oh, for, I'm, for I'm a celebrity right so have you seen the, some of the Facebook stuff of like people essentially forgiving him. <laughs> Because yeah. he did that task all right. He did all right in that. T- he got the star. You know, at the end of the day, he's an all right bloke, and he, he wombat. <sighs> Fucking hell. <laughs> he's only human. So, right, when you when you look at some of the things that he was that he was implicated in versus some of the things that he irrefutably has done. Right, mm. he's he's irrefutably been involved in the deaths of close to a hundred thousand people. Yeah. yeah, right. There are implications. There are implications of a bigger number, but irrefutably, that is that is where we're at. So, yeah. I ask. I ask. Uh, <laughs> well, this is. This is quite a confrontational opinion, but I, I use this kind of direct view to point something out to, to somebody that I was talking to the other day that holds this kind of view. Oh, he's all right. He went through it. This he's, he's a change. Uh, you know, it, it's not all his fault, yada, yada, yada. And uh, my, my kind of um, rebuttal was, mm. so um, you're implying that there are a series of like if, if you were the person that was saying that I'd be like so you're implying there are a, a series of things somebody can go through in order to show a degree of penance for being involved in killing close to 100,000 people no 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 that's not that's not what I'm saying at all so why are you telling me he's a good person you should we, we should forget about it we should move on well he's done this 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 Okay, so there is a degree of things that he can go through in order for the the implications of a hundred thousand deaths uh, 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 to be to be okay, to be to yeah. be forgotten about. Okay, so what would Hitler have to do? That's a and fucking then, good one. <laughs> and then and then just 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 oh. sit there and let them wait. How many sheep's testicles would Hitler have to eat for, <laughs> for 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 that to be okay? I'm sure he was a bit of a laugh. Was hit? Get him on karaoke, and I'm sure we can forgive all the uh, the gas chambers and uh, needless <laughs> family deaths. You know, it's right. fine. Yeah. That's... The... Go on. I was going to say one of the most sort of mind boggling things I heard at work was um, we were talking about it, 
uh, and someone said, I think this bloke was just like, oh, I mean, like, I just watch it now uh, and I, I enjoy watching him because, you know, there's no point sort of like continually bringing that up because it happened, didn't it? You know, COVID happened. What he did happened. It's done. There's nothing that can be done about it. Yeah, but that that's not the reason why you should sort of move on. The reason <laughs> why you shouldn't move on is because it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it should not have happened. It, but exactly. It happened. You it's say not- to him, <laughs> so so uh, let, let's call this guy, I don't know, uh, uh, Brian, right? So you say, <laughs> okay, okay, Brian. Um, bear in mind, that was the, the first author of a book that I picked from over there. I don't know if that's his name. If that is his name, <laughs> that's a pure coincidence. Um, you, you say, uh, okay, Brian. Um, so Matt Hancock has... Um, <laughs> Uh, and I just to qualify if anyone's listening, he hasn't done this. I'm painting a hypothetical. Um, Matt Hancock has killed your daughter, Brian. The bugger. It, it took it took three years for him to be uh, uh, for him to be brought to court and questioned about the whole endeavour. Three years, mm. and he sat there going, "Well, you know, I I fell in love with this other woman." I had this, I've left my constituency to do this, yada, yada, yada. And you're going to go, ah, oh, well, it's done now. It's passed. You know, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> that justifies no. it completely. No, no. So that, <laughs> that's my point in terms of a, a, the, the awareness around manipulation tactics. Mm. Okay. So when, when you look at any, any kind of manipulation tactic, whether it comes from a a, a salesperson or or a marketer or a narcissist or a psychopath, I'm I'm purposely being quite polarizing in my words, when you are aware of anything that immediately ignites your your emotions to whatever degree, but where, you know, it it immediately does something, shifts something inside you in terms of your feelings and your, your limbic system activity. As opposed to accepting the information that you are presented with, you need to, that is the time for us as human beings to question that further, to question that further as a response. You know, you, if you see it all the time with, with the concept of draping half naked men and women on cars and gym equipment and, uh, like I saw the most ridiculous one the, the, the other day. There was a woman um, uh, squatting on Instagram, but holding her tea that she was trying to sell. And oh. the, 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 there's no corollary yeah. between tea and squatting. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's kind of like um, there's a lot of... Uh, sort of uh, like gaming podcasts and what have you with oh this is i, I don't know if i should go down this route actually but uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound there a bit is. sexist but there's uh, like a lot of female uh gamer pod- i'm not not all but there are mm-hmm. uh, some evident and very popular female uh podcasters who do a lot of gaming channels um but some of them like you watch those videos uh, and the thumbnails are pretty much just clean. I'll find a name for you. I'll find but, a name. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's like cleavage and revealing I, top and I'm everything. Around. Yes. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but like a like a right. That yeah. is that is flagrant manipulation. Yeah, flagrant. it's watch this video because it's not about the content. It's about the other thing, the other the other thing staring you in the face and the fact that right. they're using that and it's plainly obvious. And you will click on it, of course, like any... Yeah, yeah. You know, men are going to because they know yeah. they know the crowd. They know the sort of thing, but they also know what, what clickbait is. They know how to bring people in with the thumbnails and use certain things to get them to watch it. And... You know, it's it's just that that it's all kind of accepted, isn't it? Now you won't mm. ever say it. You wouldn't like you look at the comments of these videos, and they're very monitored. The mm. sort of nothing you can mm. see in the comments uh, is to do with the thumbnails. Yet you know mm. a large portion of the views. That's are what there. got them there. 
That's yeah. all got me. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got I've got a list here of some of the things that that Hancock was was irrefutably involved in. Um, uh, and, and a lot of this comes from uh, uh, Dominic Cummings, which isn't the most reputable of characters anyway. <laughs> um, so, so make of that what you will. Yeah. But, but to be fair, I, I would consider him the most reliable source because there's nothing more reliable than someone bitter who wants to sort of like, you know. If I'm going down, spill, I'm going to drag everyone else down with me. But yeah, yeah, that's it. Spill. You're going to get the most honest thing there. You're not going to get nice honesty. You're going to get harsh, brutal yeah, honesty. Brutal honesty. honesty. From someone um, who's pissed off because they're a dick as well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, following his resignation as Boris Johnson's chief medical advisor, Dominic Cummings claimed in twenty uh, in twenty twenty one May that Hancock had lied to Bojo about a promise to test patients discharged from hospital before entering care homes. Uh, lied. Said they tested. Said they said they compassed. Didn't. That led to the deaths of thirty two thousand one hundred and fifty four people. Fucking no, man. There was a PPE shortage um, that put us, on, as Britain, uh, of, uh, on a similar level as the PPE shortages of third world countries that Hancock was directly in charge of. Right? He gave mm. nurses a, a, a 1% pay rise. One. Even, even after saving our, saving our gracious and precious prime minister, ex prime minister, right? That he gave uh, he gave contracts to his friends that ran businesses to allow them to put forth information that was used to develop our track and trace system. Uh, sorry, test and trace uh, system with the app uh, and whatnot, which failed immeasurably led to the estimated deaths of uh, uh, where are we sixty four thousand. Uh, 322 people and nine billion pounds unaccounted for. Uh, let's not forget that he broke lockdown rules to go and fuck some other woman. Fair dues, he fell in love. But it's still not it, <laughs> by any means an excuse. Exactly. If you're in a shit marriage, which I've been in one, if you're in a shit marriage uh, and you, you, you fall in love with someone else, fair dues. Yeah. Right, but when you're putting other people's lives at, at risk and telling somebody else, it's duplicity yeah. to it's duplicity to the nth degree, right? And that's just a few. That's just a few examples. So we're already dealing with close to a hundred thousand deaths, nine billion pounds, and morals that are as low as my interest in talking to DA about football. <laughs> but he sang karaoke. With the other but campmates. He, but he but sang karaoke. Guy. Love the guy, man. But he sang karaoke. He sang so, karaoke. He, he sang karaoke. karaoke. And that was the thing, right? So when when you have these kind of situations that immediately inflame your emotions. Matt Hancock's mm -hmm. going into the jungle. I'm gonna vote for him to do every task, but you know, this he's gonna he's gonna uh, chew on some rocks and uh, suck off a kangaroo and a uh, headbutt deck, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. The, I don't know. I've not watched I'm a Celebrity for uh, decades. I don't know how long it's been, but like this, it's it's at least over uh, at least over a decade because I hate TV. Um, <laughs> but within that end, right? That's that could be a deciding factor in him thinking about uh, a, a rebranding, reimagination. Mm. I'll go in here knowing full well. That there are that there are people who will vote for me to do this because I am such a cunt. If yeah. I take this with as stiff an upper lip as I possibly can, yeah, that's going to make me seem to be uh, uh, more upstanding. And I can joke, I can be honest, I can be vulnerable, forgetting the fact that there is a politician that's left his constituency by by itself. That's like leaving a kid home alone. Mm. Has has been paid close to half a million just to be there. Yeah, <laughs> just it's, to be there. And it's not it's forgiveness. It's a grand business elements. move, isn't it? <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. There are those elements that are swept under the rug because of a degree of trauma that this person went through. So when you engage emotions mm. and position yourself lower, it's easier to get things under the table, right? So take this for example. 
when I um, when I was uh, uh, we were in that place, and this is me being manipulative. Bear in mind, I'm going to tell you a, a kind of tactical story of how I used it. Um, <laughs> when I was uh, uh, at that place that we worked at, yeah, and I was brought into a meeting with um, LB and KT. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. KT, KT accused me of using my family issues that were going on at the time to uh, uh, get days off work. Right, which I think is I remember this. Yeah, which yeah. is flat out fucking disgusting behaviour. Yeah, yeah. On behalf on behalf of anyone, let alone my my boss at the time, to accuse me of doing something so utterly reprehensible. Yeah. So I lent in, I lent into the accusations and displayed my rage. Realistically, what I was feeling at that time was, hey, you're a fucking idiot. You've been listening to, to people talk behind your back uh, and whatnot. Yeah. That just makes you a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> and, and clearly <laughs> means that the position that you hold is is a joke at that moment if, if you're listening to if you're listening to those times but what what i showed her was rage what i showed her was rage i got very very upset uh, yeah. by the end of it she apologized to me <laughs> she apologized to me and said yes. that maybe she was just listening to the wrong people fucking too right right yeah now let, just to clarify I used my rage to get a position uh, of 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 uh, subordination from somebody yeah. that holds a deeply arrogant perspective. But what I'm using as an analogy there is in that position, she holds all the power. When I when I elevate myself to a position that is higher in yeah. that moment, that's the manipulative uh, the the manipulative tactic which. Hancock knew fully, in my opinion, in, in those moments. You can't yeah. enter into the jungle at this stage, yeah. Not 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 knowing what it's about. If you are if you are thought of in the press, public view, whatever it is, as a negative character, mm. you, you can't enter into there knowing. Well, I'll be all right. Maybe I'll have to do one or two, two this kind of thing. <laughs> that is going to be there at the forefront of your mind. You're going to be there for most, if not all, of these challenges. Absolutely, yeah. So how to spot a manipulation tactic would be, at its core, anything that inflames your emotional side. Anything. Because it's only when you apply further questions yeah. the side of that that you can realize oh this is just a legitimate emotional response it's just a legitimate yeah. emotional response to a happy pleasant awesome situation i'm not being manipulated great but i've applied the critical reasoning needed in order to answer those questions mm. when you take that time that's why sherlock stated emotional qualities are antagonistic to clear reasoning and that is the uh, uh, logical poll, uh, just to jump in. Hello, I've just seen your <laughs> comment there. Um, we can't play some on screen at the moment. At the minute, we're going old school uh, 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 at the moment. For so, me and my snuggie. Yeah, for because <laughs> like Adam's living rock and roll in a, in, a, in in an electro onesie of rainbow is is. level uh, of rainbow level awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> living inside one as we speak. Right. So. How, in those moments, do we acknowledge a situate? Oh, we've got. We're already getting a, a spam messages. This is brilliant. From, oh, no. from yeah, yeah. Find my hot girls here, and you, YouTube's already holding them for review. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. I'm all right. But they might legitimately have hot girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're warm, you know, send them outside. <laughs> Fucking winter, after all, right? Go on. But exactly, here's my point. How do you build up a, a, a cognizant reaction to emotions that immediately, by default, go under the surface? Right? Yeah. Like when, when you get to. Uh, I didn't uh, recognize that. 
Yeah, exactly. When you get to the point of having a few drinks at a bar, you know you're pretty drunk. You know this next one that you're going to have is going to put you on your back. Why do you yeah. still drink it anyway? Is there an element of of peer pressure of sorts? Is there an element of just being in the party mood? Is there an element of uh, I don't know? I'll go out and throw up and have a meal after the <laughs> after the, you know that will that will that will sort me out afterwards. All of these questions are reliant on your emotions not being critically questioned right if there was a voice to go are you sure you really want that next one even if you go yep immediately that question by virtue of the fact has made you think about it a little bit more Uh, it's made you think about it a little bit more so go on what were you gonna say I was going to say, is it sort of like your inhibition sort of like, obviously, like in a drinking scenario, is your inhibition obviously decreased in uh, capacity to have that voice there? Because I suppose it quietens it, doesn't it? Yeah. In a sense, yeah. brings other things forward. Uh, uh, absolutely. And th- that element's only applicable to those that, that don't have aphantasia. If, if, you, if you suffer with aphantasia, then you haven't got that little voice in your head. Uh, that, that tells you things are some way, and you know you haven't got that sort of inner monologue of processing uh, uh, that the rest of us do. Um, and you know, schizophrenics have at least nine or ten of them, um, which Holy is an enti- which is an entirely different problem. Yeah. Uh, but once you acknowledge the fact that your emotions are inflamed, that is when you are malleable. That <laughs> is when you can be subject to change. So what I did in the early stages, before I even understood any of the neuroscientific concepts, we don't need to get into any of that. You can be cognizant of the moving factors just by taking stock of what shifts you emotionally. So I wrote down elements of what I liked in the world, music, fiction, film, TV, personalities, books, you know, food, uh, you know, all, all of this kind of thing. And I, mm. I wrote da- I wrote down the things that move me on, on those lines positively and negatively. Yeah. Positively and negatively. So that after the fact, I could have a, a, a list of physical responses that I made when I am emotionally engaged at this, yeah. at, at, at this time. So when I get on my soapbox uh, and I'm talking about things, and I do it a lot, Right? Is anyone that watches the podcast will know I do it a lot. <laughs> right? Um, when I'm talking about things that really sort of engage me positively, yeah. I'll be talking really, really fast. My hands will be doing this, and I'll be leaning forward, and there'll be a lot of a lot of illustration with my arms. How can I hope to even be aware of my emotional engagement if I am too busy enjoying? the positivity yeah. of whatever that I'm talking about. If it is, then I don't stop and think, what do I do in these times? What do I do in this moment? Just write it down, think it through, take that step in those yeah. times, right? Have you ever been in a moment where you've been um, you know, on a diet or a health kick or a gym routine or worse to that effect, but you've been stood in front of the fridge Thinking, yeah. <laughs> thinking, I want a snack or 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 a, or a, or a, or a drink or, or something that that yeah. would be that would be harmful towards that routine. Has that ever happened? Oh yeah, absolutely. When we used to go to a pure gym after work and like get home and you'd be like, well, I could eat just you know some cereal or there's a massive meal here waiting for me. <laughs> 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 <Now that instead. laughs> right. So Your which craving it? Exactly. Which of those options provides you more emotionally? Right. For, oh, for yeah. whatever reason, for whatever, whether it's good or bad, whether it's good or bad, but for whatever reason, right, which of those options provide you more emotionally? Oh, oh the shit food. The shit food, <laughs> right? The shit yeah, food. Absolutely. Because yeah. like with the, with the cereal or whatever it was in that, yeah, it might be cold and yeah. nourish you, but it's just cold. Like, yeah, it, it's and not going to satisfy you there and then, is it? It's just sort exactly. of not going to get that. that oh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you have a big, it. fat, glorious meal, yeah, it, it, it just engages all elements of you. 
if yeah. you were more aware of those feelings brewing early on, yeah. you would be more equipped. Not that it would be easy, but it would be easier yeah. to decide one way or the other which way you're going to go. There was there was a new, and I referenced this a lot because these neuroscience experiments helped us to understand the time delay between thought and action. Yeah. It was it was experiments by a chap called Benjamin Libby who okay. was who was trying to prove uh, the existence of free will. Right? Mm. He was trying to prove it. And he hooked he hooked his students and his counterparts and people in the experiment experiments up to an EEG. So he's got these people with all of the relative nodes and pads stuck to their heads and whatnot. Had the guy sat on arms of a chair, not a motorbike, right? Imagine the arms of the chair are here, and, and said to them, just flex a fist. Don't think about it. Don't plan out what you're going to do. Whenever you want, just flex one. Whenever. And he was watching their brainwave monitor uh, to, to read out the differences uh, at the end yeah. of it, to, to pattern, uh, uh, pattern out the responses. And though the experiments towards free will eventually failed, what he found by the end of it is there was a time delay between thought and where we are consciously aware of it. Mm. So he could watch the early product of these brainwaves in order wow. to figure out which hand was going to go and when. That's right? So Yeah. So when, when you're feeling happy, sad, angry, hungry, horny, tired, pissed off, exhilarated, whatever yeah. it is, when you're feeling any of that, when you become aware of those things, the neurological elements have happened ages ago. They've happened a while ago, right? That's so what mad, we, isn't it? Exactly. So what we can do is we can build up our response to these physical manifestations of a mood that we've had in order to make sure that we can bring it back, to, that we can bring it back in to critically analyze something. Because when you take yeah. all of Hancock's exploits out and everything, all of these deaths, all of this money that's gone min missing, all of this degree of responsibility that's been shared, all of the lies, all of the duplicity, all of the mm. fake tears that were cried on TV, he ate sheep's bollocks for a week, sang <laughs> in a jungle, smiled, admitted some home truths, spoke about a book about dyslexia. Yeah. How do they hold up? <laughs> the reality is Not, yeah. they don't. Yeah, the reality exactly. is they don't. So they, when people they, say to you, I'll oh, stop going on about it, I just want to move on, and then and, and, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right? I understand that position because it's a point of exasperation. If you don't mm. feel that it particularly concerns you, then it doesn't concern you. Fair enough. As the, as the clever kids from today like to say, you do you, boo. Right? <laughs> but it doesn't mean that the translatable qualities of that aren't something that we need to take stock of. Liz, Liz yeah. Truss tried to do it when she became prime minister. Energy crisis at its highest that it's ever got. You're all going to die and be buried <laughs> under the weight of debt. Liz is prime minister. She's capped it. She stopped it. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a flagrant manipulation of, yeah. of what's, <laughs> of what's, of what's uh, you know, in, in, uh, the, the, the public court of opinion. Uh, yeah. in, in, in that way, these elements, because everyone is so frustrated and scared and terrified of the weight of the bills that they're going to have to face, for somebody to just go, yep, yeah, stopped, ultimately means one of two things. Either you're awesome or you had the, you had the opportunity to do that all along. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be your yeah, <laughs> exactly. And because of the virtue of emotion, we automatically go to, oh, thank you, yeah. Master Liz. Yeah. I really appreciate it. <laughs> nobody forgets this. Nobody, nobody remembers this other option. Yeah, absolutely. Which, it's, which is, which is annoying. It, it's an emotional veal, isn't it? It's just an attempt to sort of like, well, like blackmail, essentially manipulation. Like we say, it's just sort of emotionally 
uh, tunneling us mm. into thinking that there's no other options uh, or there's no other scenarios. Like government wise, we just feel like obviously after everything that happened during COVID, there's already that underlying sort of like awareness of of manipulation from the government, isn't there? And even yeah. now, it goes to show with this happening recently, it's still going on alongside everything that's happened during COVID. It's almost like we're looking at the wrong thing and yeah. they're using other things now. And the next big fear next to things like flu and, you know, diseases is money. <laughs> that's the best way to manipulate someone with, you know, you know, Easily. cost. Yeah, we can make it cheaper <laughs> if we want Easily. to. <laughs> I mean, think, think about the everyday options. Um, yeah. like uh, and, uh, people in the UK will know about this chocolate bar people outside of the UK I don't know because I don't know how far how far afield it goes nope. but the Cadbury's Freddo yeah. right you know of a Freddo um, yeah, specifically yeah. when I was when I was in my late teens early 20s um, these these cost 10p 15p yeah right they haven't changed they haven't gotten any bigger uh, their packaging hasn't changed. The chocolate isn't covered in gold leaf, and yet now <laughs> it costs a quid. Madness. There's no reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not. There's not. Or, or the, or, or the, other other than to, to other than to emotionally control or apply influence to 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 certain areas. We can we can break this down some other time. It, it calls back to. Uh, a chap by the name of uh, 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 Childini. Okay. He wrote. He wrote what I consider, and this is. I mean, it, it, a lot of people have uh, their opinions on the book. This is just my two pennies. Uh, a lot of people have what I. Uh, sorry, uh, I consider to be the, um, uh, uh, the the kind of book, the book on understanding influence yeah. and persuasion. It came with six principles, which was uh, reciprocity. Commitment and consistency, social proof, authority, liking, and scarcity. Right, we can get into we can get into those uh, uh, next next time on the podcast as well uh, in, in that way. But as yeah. as salient as as salient points for something that you guys can look at moving forwards, build up your responses to your emotional shifts. Build those up, and you will be more reactive to the change. So you can ask yourself questions about that. Yeah, and it is, it's, it is a difficult one, isn't it, that? Because I suppose not a lot of people would question it. it, it it's it's kind of like, I suppose, you're trying to catch yourself in the moment, aren't you? Especially in mm. emotional responses and stuff like that, where you're trying to see uh, and assess whether or not you're... you. Because sometimes, especially in this day of mental health, people don't know if they're manipulating themselves into a way of really? thinking. It could not necessarily be the person. It could be their interpretation. And then really? suddenly you could develop an awareness of this. And But then again, how do you know what this is? <laughs> is it exactly. mistrusting information? Is it emotion? Is it persons exactly. outside of those things? Giving yourself the space yeah. to ask those questions outside of the influence yeah. of emotional entanglement. And, and I'm not, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you can completely separate the two because, neurologically, realistically, psychologically healthy, you can't. Right, mm. but to give yourself the space to ask those questions, to yeah. try and critically, critically analyze yeah. them, will allow you a better opportunity to uh, to gain some kind of strength to re to the responses. So, with that in mind, guys, uh, uh, that's that's kind of a, a first insight into in terms of the the. Uh, the way to arm yourselves against manipulation tactics. Um, in terms of to John Wickham. Yeah, John Wickham. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to basically kill a city, then um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about what you take away from it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> um, mate, if we keep talking like that, we'll end up on a Netflix documentary. You watch. Um, <laughs> hey, it's the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that in mind, folks, we are going to love you and leave you, and we will uh, we will see you Thank again you. soon.